Cyberpunk has had a brand new update. I know this isn't some regular game content update, I wouldn't be covering that here on the channel, but it's introduced real-time path tracing, which is pretty exciting. This allows for more accurate lighting and reflections, even when compared to ray tracing, and spoiler alert, it looks so good. Path tracing is essentially the step up from ray tracing, and it does take a lot of computing power to run because it would even give an RTX 4090 a run for its money. Just imagine ray tracing, as good as it looks already, but looking even better, and it comes with an astronomically high cost in computing performance. Path tracing in Cyberpunk is technically a technical slash preview feature at the minute, so it's not fully released, I guess and it's locked for GPUs that have a smaller frame buffer than 8GB. Even with 8GB frame buffer GPUs, I think you would be struggling with this because my RTX 3080 has 10GB of VRAM and at 1440p it was using all of it. So today I'm going to be testing non-ray tracing, so rasterization rendering, ray tracing and path tracing. Not only am I comparing the performance of these though, I'm also going to have a look at the image quality as well and see what you're getting for the lost frames. Obviously path tracing will look the best, rasterization will look the worst and ray tracing will be somewhere in between. Performance will also follow these as well because it's a basic concept of PC gaming. The better the game looks, the harder it is to push out them frames. Unlike a usual testing video, today I'm using my main PC which has a Ryzen 9 3950X, a, GT a GTX card? No. <laughs> an RTX 3080 10GB Founders Edition, 32GB of Corsair Dominator, CL16 3200MHz running in dual channel, and the boot drive is a Samsung 980 Pro PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD. Resizable bar is also enabled today, and I'm not sure if resizable bar actually does make a difference in Cyberpunk, but if you want to see a resizable bar video, let me know and I can get that made for you. All testing today is done at 1440p and when DLSS has been used, it will be used on the balance setting and it will be mentioned accordingly. All performance figures are taken from the in-game benchmark and this ensures repeatability with my results. Additionally, all testing today is done with my optimized settings. So we're not using a high or ultra preset today. I'm using optimized settings, which I'll have linked down in the description below. Looking at the frame rate performance, and we will start off with the non ray tracing results here, so rasterization. Here, Cyberpunk runs into a slight CPU bottleneck as the RTX 3080 isn't being utilized fully, an issue which I covered in this video up here. But that's okay because it gets 100 FPS on average, and the 1% lows are pretty solid as well with 73 FPS. This isn't bad at all, and 100 FPS in a story game like Cyberpunk is way more than enough. Turning on ray tracing on the medium cuts the frame rate in half, dropping to 47 FPS, and the 1% low also dropped to 37 as well. In terms of frame rate stability, Cyberpunk still felt great, but 47 FPS isn't ideal. That's why enabling DLSS and putting it onto balanced isn't a bad idea. This boosts both the average and the 1% low up to 76 and 50 FPS respectively. DLSS is truly a great technology, which can be free performance in some cases, with minimal loss in image quality. I do recommend using quality at 1440p though. Now it's time for the big one, path tracing. The performance here was, well, not great at all, with 17, yes that's 17 FPS on average, and a 1% low of just 12 FPS. It does look nice, but let's be honest, this is just a PowerPoint slideshow. Also, my RTX 3080's 10GB of frame buffer was cutting it close with just under 10GB was being utilized, so it was a close one today. Enabling DLSS actually made it playable, boosting the average and the 1% low up to 43 and 35 respectively. This also started to use around 9GB of video memory, so it wasn't running into any bottlenecks with the frame buffer either. So if you want to play with path tracing, I'd say DLSS is basically a must here. Analyzing the quality of each rendering method now, and we will see what we are getting in return for the performance loss. Looking at the puddle in the alleyway from the benchmark, the non-ray tracing reflection looks comical when paired to both ray tracing and path tracing. Ray tracing and path tracing look very similar in the reflection, and they both look great. 
But where path tracing massively beats out ray tracing is in the lighting in this scene. It does a much better job with the lighting on the sand to the left than both ray tracing and non-ray tracing. Rasterization definitely looks the worst here, as it should, and regular ray tracing doesn't look too bad if I'm honest. The shadow from the building also looks much better when path tracing is enabled and there just isn't any competition here. The lighting is a lot softer and it's a lot more realistic to what you'd probably see in real life. As for regular ray tracing though, it doesn't look too bad but it looks not great when it's alongside path tracing if I'm honest. And conventional rendering here just isn't in the same competition. It's in the car park, not the stadium, if I'm honest. Moving to inside the bar, a drastically different scene to the alleyway. Lighting, especially shadows, is much improved when path tracing is being used. When zooming in, none of them look particularly great, but that's because it's rendering at 1440p and not 4K. But if you look at the bottom right of the scene, you can see how the shadows are being cast by the railings. With ray tracing enabled, it doesn't change too much, from regular rasterization, but the rest of the scene does look a lot better with more complex shadow handling across the scene. Path tracing absolutely annihilates both rasterization and ray tracing here with much better lighting and shadow complexity. Notice how the shadows casted by the railings are a lot more subtle. This would most likely how the scene would look in real life. Looking at the other side of the table by the character's feet, you can see how the shadows are being handled. Rasterization here looks absolutely comical with very poor shadow handling and ambient occlusion. Ray tracing doesn't look too bad, certainly a lot better than it being off and finally path tracing is the best looking here with much more complex shadows and ambient occlusion. So looking at the quality comparisons, normal rasterization performance is great, the performance is not bad at all, getting 100 FPS. We actually did run it into a CPU bottleneck here today, so the RTX 3080 is probably capable of more. But when you look at the quality comparison to ray tracing and path tracing, rasterization is looking a bit old these days. Ray tracing does look pretty good, if I'm honest. It doesn't look bad at all, which it shouldn't, because it's basically a feature that is locked to NVIDIA GPUs. AMD GPUs can ray trace, but they're not particularly great at it. Path tracing blows both of these out of the water with much better light and shadow handling. So if you have a higher end RTX card, something like the RTX 4070 or RTX 3080, they're around roughly the same levels of performance. I would recommend just playing around with path tracing, see what it looks like, but I wouldn't recommend daily driving it on your playthrough. This is because it is a absolute performance killer and you will need DLSS because without it, it just ran absolutely horrendously. It did look good, but it was a PowerPoint slideshow. So if you've got one of these cards, I'd recommend putting on normal ray tracing, putting it on medium or high, and the game will look absolutely brilliant. You'll be about 70% of the way there to path tracing, and you'll be getting a lot more frame rate while you're at it as well, especially if you enable something like DLSS and put that on quality. But if you have an RTX 4090, which is an absolute beast of a GPU, I wish I had one, but the CPU bottleneck would just be horrendous because it's already quite bad. You could probably get away with playing with path tracing and enabling DLSS and your gameplay would be pretty playable. And as for AMD cards with path tracing, I'm not sure how well it would perform. Maybe the 7900 XTX might perform pretty well, but I don't know. So if anyone's tested that, let me know in the comments because I would like to see them performance figures. So overall, path tracing looks incredible, but if your GPU is a bit of a slouch, you're not going to be having a great time. My RTX 3080, which is by no means a slouch, it's still a very powerful GPU. It struggled and all of its VRAM was being used with no DLSS enabled at 1440p. This probably did contribute towards some of the FPS drops when I had it enabled. So your mileage will definitely vary. And if you've got an eight gigabyte graphics card, you might need to play with DLSS at 1080p and the game might start to fall apart there. Seeing path tracing in action has got me very excited for the future of games, and that is because I do genuinely believe it will be the default rendering method in about 10 years time. I do think it will take quite a while for rasterization to go the way of the dodo, but I do genuinely believe that path tracing will become the de facto rendering method. 
But in 2023, in the here and now, it's just way too hard to run unless if you've got the absolute pinnacle of graphics cards. With the performance of each generation of graphics cards improving massively, I wouldn't write off path tracing as a viable rendering method for video games. Do you genuinely believe that path tracing will become a viable rendering method or do you think it's just going to be down to technical previews and it will never actually take off? Let me know down in the comments. I'm going to leave this one here though. If you like this video, like it, stay subscribed for more tech content because I am working on a lot right now and I'll catch you in the next one.